Thank you for that introduction, Leon. I'd like you to imagine for a moment the unthinkable scenario where a new RNA virus previously unknown to science emerges and sparks off a global pandemic. The virus would likely come from a zoonotic source. It would be highly transmissible even during the pre-symptomatic stages. It would have a high mortality rate, particularly for at-risk populations, and it would be totally novel. Humanity would have no native immunity, no vaccines, and no treatments available. Such a pandemic would lead to massive social and economic disruption, and the primary means of preventing it from rapidly sweeping through the global population and overwhelming the global medical apparatus would be testing and tracing, isolating affected patients and their contacts, and identifying cases early in the course of disease progression. The diagnostic infrastructure would rapidly shift to address this urgent need. Highly instrumented RNA-based tests would be developed first, but material shortages and long backlogs would limit the scalability of the approach, particularly in the face of an exponentially expanding pandemic. Vast swaths of the global populace without access to this sort of infrastructure would effectively remain in the dark. Serological tests for the detection of patient antibodies would emerge next, and these would prove useful for tracking the spread of the disease, but they would suffer from specificity issues and would be of little use for identifying active cases early enough to inform an effective intervention. The ideal test format, killer app, would be something that tests for active infection, that provides immediate results, and most importantly, that can be manufactured at scale. Tens of millions of tests would be needed in, per day in the US alone in order to detect the disease early in the stages of disease progression before it's transmitted to additional patients. Now, of course, we know that unfortunately, this is not some far-flung hypothetical. Um, this is very much our reality in the time of COVID-19. And we've been living this sort of waking societal nightmare for about three months now, and very likely will be for some months to come. So solutions to this problem are desperately needed. An ideal assay format for addressing this urgent need might be similar to the common pregnancy test, a lateral flow assay that can be easily used and interpreted. However, these lateral flow assays suffer from limitations as well. Current manufacturing infrastructure could maybe produce 100,000 of these tests a day at every site. And more importantly, these tests would depend on biological reagents called antibodies for the detection of coronavirus proteins in patient samples. And let me explain why that matters. Um, antibodies are, are nature's original binding proteins, and they're raised by our immune systems to specifically recognize and flag targets from invading pathogens. These antibodies have been repurposed by the diagnostics industry to detect these targets in patient samples in the context of lateral flow assays. However, antibodies are slow to develop uh, and difficult to produce at scale. The development process itself is exhaustive, um, typically taking three to six months to screen through thousands of potential variants in order to find just those that actually function in the context of the diagnostic tests. And then reagent production is done using slow growing mammalian cells often in the guts of mice. Over the course of four weeks, a single mouse might make enough material to produce, say, 5,000 tests. To scale to tens of millions of tests per day, hundreds of thousands of mice would be required, all of which would require infrastructure and an army of veterinarians. A more scalable approach might be mammalian cell culture and stainless steel vessels, but that suffers from similar intensive infrastructure requirements and production bottlenecks. Lastly, you'd see limited production throughput in the actual test format itself because it's subject to this sort of pick and place manufacturing approach. So what's the solution? How can we achieve this scalable universal diagnostic testing that would be necessary to save thousands of lives and prevent the global economy from grinding to a complete halt? We would need something that would take weeks to develop new binding uh, capabilities, days to produce that protein rather than weeks, and then we need to be able to produce millions of tests every day. Over the course of the past seven years, our work in the lab of Dr. Hadley Sykes has been grappling with exactly this sort of question. Faced with the limitations of lateral flow assays and antibodies, our lab has endeavored to reinvent the point of care diagnostic assay from the ground up. Rather than relying on manufacturing methods with limited throughput, e.g. That, that pick and place manufacturing and mammalian cell production of antibodies, we wanted to take advantage of different kinds of production platforms that can be rapidly scaled to meet the needs of the global populace. In particular, we wanted to replace antibodies altogether with something that is smaller and can be produced more readily. So we've developed a class of minimalist engineered binding proteins uh, to, to serve in the place of these antibodies. 
and these are isolated uh, from microbes found living in hot springs. We've demonstrated the use of these binding proteins. Over the course of just two weeks in March, we were able to isolate binding variants based on this common scaffold um, that are specific to the SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid protein and that binds to it with nanomolar affinity. We demonstrated the, the uh, ability to recognize and bind to this target um, at one nanomolar in the context of an actual diagnostic sandwich assay. And we've demonstrated specificity even at a thousand-fold lower concentration with a, a conflating target. What's more, we can produce a lot of this protein really quickly, really cheaply. Current estimates are 5 million tests worth of material and just 10 liters of bacterial culture in about 24 hours. So that's how we start to address the global requirement for, for diagnostic tests. And we're able to integrate these reagents into different kinds of protein constructs, fusing them to other functional proteins in order to enable multifunctional uh, applications. So in the context of paper-based tests, we're actually able to fuse these SARS-CoV-2 specific reagents to a cellulose anchoring domain in order to enable mass manufacture of paper-based diagnostics. We're now working with translational partners in order to realize exactly that sort of product profile. We've also been put in touch with uh, prospective clinical partners um, by our very own Leon Sandler, as well as our, our catalysts, Lori Pressman and Anna Voronova. Um, and we're in the process of validating the performance of these, these binding reagents in clinical samples now. We see this platform as, as sort of a unique means of addressing the most pressing and, and singular need of this current crisis. But looking beyond COVID-19, we also see this approach as enabling the next generation of point of care diagnostics for a broad range of other medical conditions, from tuberculosis and malaria to sepsis and Zika. This is the most scalable biological platform for addressing global scale uh, issues. Hadley and I have founded a, a company called Mantle Biotech in order to translate this and commercialize this, this platform. Um, and we're looking for both clinical partners for COVID-19, uh, as well as translational partners. We think that these reagents can be integrated into pretty much every diagnostic format that's out there currently today. Um, additionally, we're looking for funding partners, uh, as well as board members and teammates. Um, if any of this is of interest to you, um, or if you just want to ask questions about our platform, please feel free to join us in the, the Zoom chat room after this. Um, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to speak to those. Thanks very much for your time and attention. Appreciate it.